testing. Testing.
Hello, Nicole. Hello, Eddie. Oh, I sorry. I should say doctor. Come on, doctor. This is for today. <laughs> well, and then in, and it's probably and in proper presence as well. Yeah. There. Look good. Yes. You can only see my head, of course. <laughs> I'm so glad I finished my run on time. I thought, all oh, right, I get a chance. Because I thought it was at 1230 and I'm like, oh, I'm just yeah. going to So, all right. So am I able to answer a question here? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, on chat, I can just answer chat like yeah, that. Yeah, you can answer questions in chat or if you see, and depending on how many people we have, um, mm -hmm. if we get a lot, I'll tell them to enter questions in chat and then if I miss something, you can say, hey, you know, here's a question that should be answered. Okay. And then uh, and then they can have your email address. I can put all that. Yeah, and I'll put in uh, I'll put in the BSME advising email as well into the chat oh, so where people can ask questions. Uh, in another um, minute, I'll start maybe. admitting people. Mainly, it's uh, going to be uh, freshmen, right? Freshmen and transfer students. And transfer students. Okay. Yeah. So I'm trying to think which uh, website. Um, I have all the website ready to uh, copy and paste, you know. So undergraduate. And I figured I can show them our website and a few important places to go. Maybe do that at the beginning. Oh, that's a good idea. And what um, I'll do is that I'll look at what you're uh, showing them and then uh, have the link to mm -hmm. it, you know, so that because sometimes yeah. when you show something, people are like, oh, can I click on it? So which uh, which uh, website are you showing them? I'm just going to show the main Emmy website and then I'll go in, maybe I'll show them the student clubs and where to get to the four-year plan uh, as well. Oh, okay. Four-year plan is right there. Okay, I got that. Mm -hmm. So here we go. I'm going to go. Here we go. I'll be eating. When you say it, I will be ready. <laughs> <laughs> and if we run, hit a lull, I'll show the frequently asked questions slides from my presentation. Oh, that's a good plan. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I was just listening again to your presentation. I love it. Because <laughs> <laughs> every time I listen to it, I learn more. So, you know. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to start letting people in. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. And I'm going to mute myself. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the mechanical engineering question and answer period. Um, I have it as 126. So we'll give folks another four minutes to show up and then we will officially start right on time.
Good afternoon, everybody. So welcome to the uh, open second part of the open house for uh, mechanical engineering. Hopefully many of you have had a chance to check out the website. Uh, there is There are a number of videos there. Uh, there's one that I recorded that's kind of an introduction to the department. Uh, and there's some from uh, various uh, senior design and other uh, other projects as well. And I'm trying to admit some of people who are coming into the waiting room as we are sort of speaking. Um, and I'm going to introduce myself. And this the purpose of this meeting here is really just the Q&A section for questions that you have. Um, so as you can see from uh, my uh, Zoom name, my name is Nicole Komodo, and I'm the chair of the mechanical engineering department. Uh, a little background about me. Um, I have a PhD in mechanical engineering from the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign, and I taught at Baylor University in Texas for a few years uh, before coming out to San Jose State uh, in 2001. And so I teach, I've taught a lot of classes in the thermal fluids area, like thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, heat transfer, uh, the senior design sequence. Um, but I've been serving as chair of the department for about uh, five years now. Um, and I also oversee a master's program that we run on site at Lockheed Martin. So it's a little background on myself. Uh, also with us today, we have Lydia Rochelle. Uh, Lydia, do you want to uh, introduce yourself? Certainly. My name is Lydia Rochelle. I'm the admin analyst of the department, and I would be happy to answer any of your questions in the chat room. And welcome to Mechanical Engineering. Mm -hmm. And once we're back fully on campus, uh, Liddy's often the first people a lot of people see when they, they come into the department, and she does a lot of work with uh, assisting students. And I'm going to start out with a question that uh, came in directly to me in the chat. And then after that, um, if you have further questions, uh, if you stick them in the chat, then I will kind of go through. And if we hit a lull, I have some frequently asked questions that I can answer as well. So a question that came in via the chat was about the process to change major. So let's say you were admitted into as an undeclared student or a business major or a civil engineering major, and you decided you wanna to switch to mechanical engineering. What's the process for, for doing that? Um, it really depends on whether you're a freshman or a transfer student. If you are a freshman, um, in order to change major, you have to complete Calc 1, Calc 2 in the first physics class. Uh, so depending on, you know, if you have AP credit for calculus, uh, it may take one or two, or if you start with pre-calculus, it may take three semesters uh, to go through that particular process. Uh, we are what is called impacted, which means well, it means if you are admitted, that means you're a good student because um, we don't have room for everybody who wants to be a mechanical engineering major. And in terms of the change of major process, we're looking for about a 3.0 GPA in your major courses. So you take those first you know, few uh, classes, you can also take intro to engineering and some of your general eds. And then after that, you know, if your grades are looking good, then you can uh, switch major into mechanical engineering. Um, if you're a freshman, I do recommend in your first semester that you meet with an advisor from our Engineering Student Success Center, and they'll get you on track for that particular process. Uh, if you are a transfer student and you are admitted uh, to a different major and want to come into ME, uh, it is important that you speak with a mechanical engineering uh, advisor before you register for classes. And uh, so you can contact the department and uh, we can hook you up either with me or one of the other advisors and we can meet with you. Uh, for transfer students, it's typically a one semester process because you've already got the math and the physics, all of that, that done. And so we want to make, just make sure that everything is looking good. And so it'll be a one semester process of taking classes before you can uh, change major. And with that, uh, do we have other questions? I don't see anything in the chat at this point. Uh, I do see one here. You've mentioned being involved with Lockheed Martin. How will we connect with Lockheed and other companies alike as we attend uh, San Jose State? So it's a, a good question. The nice thing about coming to San Jose State is you're located in the Bay Area, uh, obviously. And so there are a lot of opportunities for internships. I do recommend uh, hooking up with our career center. 
and uh, they have programs to help link people up with different companies. Um, they, we don't have a direct placement process where they take you and say, okay, you're going to be go working at X, Y, or Z company. You still need to apply. Uh, in man, many cases these days, apply for quite a few places for internships and for full-time positions. Uh, we also have a one-unit class. It's a credit, no credit course that's focused specifically on how to advertise yourself and get a job that I hear is a uh, um, very helpful to run by someone with a lot of experience as a technical recruiter. Um, and I do recommend that people start getting internships as soon as they possibly can. Uh, it looks great on a resume as you're looking for that full-time uh, position, but it also really helps show, helps you see what you like and also what you don't like. I know for me, when I was in school, it helped me see what is in order to do a double major. Um, it, so it is possible. Um, what I often recommend that students do if they're interested in both, you can get a master's degree in three or four semesters and then even advanced degree. What I'll often say is do your bachelor's degree in one and then for your electives, take a couple classes in the other major and then come for the master's degree in the other one. So it's probably maybe only one semester more than doing a double major, and then you have a graduate degree. So it is possible, but that's what I always recommend people think about. We tend to have people do that a decent amount uh, between mechanical and aerospace engineering, especially uh, because there's a lot of a uh, lot of overlap. Uh, does the ME program have a four plus one BS plus MS? No, we do not. Um, and the, the quickest you can get done with a master's degree is three semesters. Uh, and then you have to do a little bit of planning ahead of time. Um, if you have, sometimes we have someone who is taking five years for the bachelor's degree and they have some extra time in their last semester and you can take up to nine uh, units towards your master's degree while you're still an undergrad. Um, the master's degree is 30 units. So if you do that, then you got 21 still to go. I'm going to share some frequently asked questions. Now, if you watch the video that I recorded and posted on the site, uh, this is basically where that this comes from. Um, we talked about the first one. We talked about classes in the summer. How hard is it to get involved in a club? It's actually pretty easy. There are a lot of options. Uh, right now, the only clubs that are on campus are our three vehicle teams and I had to work a little special magic. They're enrolled in a, a hybrid independent study class that gives them campus access. Um, in the fall, though, the university is opening back up for, um, uh, for clubs. Uh, do you recommend getting a job? We did talk a little bit about internships. Yes. In fact, our advisory board said that they would rather hire someone with experience either in an internship or maybe being a lead in one of the clubs with a little lower GPA versus hiring someone with a 4.0. How hard is it to get an internship? It does take work. Um, well, especially right now, there are a lot of companies that aren't, haven't been offering internships that normally do because everything is online and they can't bring people into campus. Um, so you do have to send out a good number of resumes, but uh, we do have programs I've mentioned through the Career Center uh, that'll help, as well as that one unit class that I mentioned. Uh, we do have some students who do research with faculty members, um, and we have a bunch of them that are published authors by the time that they uh, graduate. And so it's up to you to really kind of make that connection with a particular instructor. Um, and also sometimes people go outside of mechanical engineering. Like we, there's a, a former San Jose State student who's getting her PhD in biomechanics at Stanford this semester. 
And when she was a San Jose State student in our department, she did research in the biology department so that she could get kind of both, both backgrounds. How big are San Jose State classes? As a freshman, you will hit some big classes, particularly, you know, Physics 50, they're gonna have a really big lecture and then smaller lab sections. We have other classes that are uh, gonna be a lot smaller, like this dynamics class is a junior level class that um, the failure rate used to be pretty high, like 25%. And so we capped it about 30. And then we also integrated a lot of, you know, we're doing a lot more of, you know, flipping of the class and some different changes. We have more tutors. And this past semester, the failure rate in that class was 4%. So um, you're going to see a big range in the size of courses. Classes at San Jose State are taught by professors, but lab TAs typically, or labs are typically taught by TAs. We have some that are taught by professors, but mostly TAs. So as a freshman, if you take the CAD class, the lecture is taught by a professor who's been with us many years, and then the labs are taught by a graduate student TAs. We talked about change of major. Oh, often I get a question, what about mechanical or software computer engineering? Aren't there more jobs for software and computer engineers? Yes, in the Bay Area there are but there are also more software and computer engineers. So there's more competition. If you like both, one option is to do your bachelor's degree in mechanical, but focus in the mechatronics area. Um, in your senior year, you have to take some electives and an advanced design class. And if you take them in the mechatronics area, that kind of hits both aspects. Uh, where do I get hands-on experience? Uh, there are a lot of labs, starting with the Intro to Engineering class uh, that uh, those of your freshmen may be taking uh, either in the fall or the spring. And you see a few of the other classes that are really heavy duty involved with design and building projects. Let me show you another, one other website or that you might be interested in here. I have to go back and share my screen. And Dr. Carato, as you are doing so, there's another question. Uh, what is a course, oopsies, it disappeared. What is a course you recommend to take this summer to graduate in four years? Okay, let's take a look at that in a moment. Um, fall schedules will be posted by the university in April 23rd. The ME schedule is actually posted down here. This is a draft, so there might be some minor changes. So you can always, if you're interested in the schedule for mechanical engineering classes, particularly if you're a transfer student, you can click on that and download the file. And if you're deciding if you need to be close to campus or not, um, then we wanna take a look at the mode. Here, let me open that and let's see. Can you see the schedule now or is it still showing the website, Lenny? Uh, no, I can't see the schedule. Okay, let me stop share and reshare. Okay, so again, this is particularly for transfer students um, as you're deciding if you need to be close to campus or not. Uh, so, for example, a lot of transfer students take Dynamics, ME 101, and what you want to look at is this instruction mode. Uh, I sent an email out about this to all our current students, but you wouldn't have gotten that. So, mode two, all online. So, if you want to come to campus for anything, this section is mode four. It's, it's mostly online, but some visits to campus. Um, this is our mechatronics class. You'll see the lecture, section one is the lecture. That is going to be online. And these things with the P, P means in person. Those are labs and they're all gonna be in person. So if you wanna take mechatronics in your first semester and you're a transfer student, uh, then you're gonna to need to come to campus. Let me take a look. Um, and you know, this kind of cryptic just by looking at the numbers. Uh, Liddy, could you look up the 
lists the um, the website that lists what the class modes are and put it in the chat. Certainly. So ME 113, a lot of transfer students take thermodynamics their first semester. And you've got three options. Um, the first two are different kinds of online classes. Uh, ME 113, that's in mode six, which means once a week online and once a week in person. If any of you are from Evergreen Valley College, you might be interested to know that ME 113 section three is taught by Dr. Tabrizi, who also teaches at uh, Evergreen as uh, a, a great instructor. Um, see here, like the heat transfer class, you see that one's also mode six, once a week in person, once a week online. So again, it looks pretty cryptic like right here, but as you're deciding what classes to register for, it's for the fall, it'll be important to take a look at what mode. Um, I put it in the chat. Okay. Yeah. So that instruction mode list there. Okay. We have, um, so what courses do you recommend to take this summer to graduate in four years? A few options. So good summer classes. So if this is, if you are a freshman, so summer class, I can put this in the chat. Courses equivalent to Chem 1A, which is our chemistry class, or you could start off with your math. So math 30 is Calc 1 or whichever your next calculus class is, maybe you have AP credit, or you could take uh, just general education courses to knock some out of the way. Uh, but and I'm gonna uh, GE area. And if you are, are thinking about taking a summer class and you're not sure, again, drop me or the advisors an email and we can take a look and say, yes, that's good or no, that's not. Um, these GE areas are probably pretty cryptic to you right now. GE area A3 is a general education course called critical thinking. I said, don't take that one because that's waived for engineering majors. What's the overall transfer mechanical engineering graduation rate? You know, I should have checked those numbers again before the meeting. Uh, I want to say it's like 85% or something like that. Um, but that would be like overall um, two year rate. I just don't remember. Uh, I'd have to double check on, on that one. Uh, so overall, I think, again, it's like 85%, but some people take two years, some take three. We have some who take four. Uh, depends if you're working and which courses that you are done with. If you are a transfer student and you want to be done in two years, so let me put this in the chat. So a transfer student and want to be done in two years. So you absolutely must be done with differential equations, which is our math 33A and CE and statics, CE 95 before coming in the fall and physics 52, which is the third physics class recommended. So if you're a transfer student, want to be done in two years and you are missing statics, see if you can get it in the summer somewhere. One nice thing is since summer classes are online, you can take it anywhere in the state. Uh, you're not limited to just the community college close to you. Um, our prerequisite sequence is pretty tight. Uh, for the upper division. So that's why you really, you have to have those two classes, the math, the differential equations and statics to be done before you can come. Otherwise there's just really almost virtually no way to get done in two years. Let's see. So if there's a question, 
uh, if I didn't pass pre-calc this year, would I still be able to go straight into Calc 1, or would I have to take pre-calc at a community college over the summer? There is a calculus placement test. Um, I'm not sure the process, they keep changing that, so I'm not sure the process so it's gonna, that's going to be like this summer. Um, so if you place into Calc 1, you can go directly into Calc 1. Um, but if you don't place into Calc 1, you could either take pre-calculus as a freshman or the summer ahead of time, and then you could get into Calc 1 as you're in your first semester. If you start with pre-calculus in your first semester, you still can get done in four years, but it's hard. Um, you have to take two summers uh, in order to kind of make up for that and looking at the prerequisite sequence. One of my number one recommendations for new students is to get involved with a club. Um, partly for the club experience, but also just making those connections with other students in your major and similar majors. Um, if you're just kind of stuck at home taking math and physics and your English and slogging through those, it can be a rough road. If you join a club and you make uh, friends, you can also talk with upper division students. They can give you the scoop on, hey, you need to take this class with this professor, not with that one. Um, and it's a real way to feel like you belong at the university. Um, and they, they really, and they get some great experience uh, as well. Um, employers actually really like to hire people out of our Formula SAE teams in particular, because they get great experience working on a team on a major project with deadlines. And they know that that process makes them so much more career ready. Uh, coming out of the university. Uh, but also, again, it really helps in that first year in particular, if you're a freshman, you know, as you're, uh, you're not taking as many of the engineering classes and you're taking the, the physics and the math and chem and it's, it's, a, it's a good way to kind of see where you're going. And over the summer, we will have some uh, Zoom sessions with some of the club leaders, and we'll invite uh, all of the incoming students to those. And so that you can kind of get a feel for what are the types of clubs that are out there, uh, which ones might be good to try out. If we were, uh, if we were able to have a on campus open house, then they'd have probably some of those students would be there showing off their projects and you could actually talk to them, which would be nice. Liddy, do you have anything you want to share with the students? Or students, I know there are also probably parents on this as well. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any further question. If I do not have the answer, I will make sure to connect you with the person that does ask the answer for you so, so that you know you can always uh, be heard. So question is, I know that San Jose State accepted more students this year. So are there enough spaces, especially at the upper division? So the acceptances were dependent on uh, major. And actually I gave admission the number of students that I felt that we could handle and still get everybody into the courses, which was actually a little bit lower than this past fall. Uh, and so I, I don't think there's a problem that uh, San Jose State as a whole accepted more students because we've, uh, uh, admissions was, and they're, they're usually pretty good in hitting their targets. Um, so I, I think that we're going to be fine. Um, you know, there's possible that they've surprised us, but they have not really in the past. And a good thing is we have, in addition to our full-time faculty, we have a great group of uh, lecture faculty and many of them work full-time in industry. So they bring a good industry experience in. 
Uh, but we actually have such a good group that they could teach more classes than they already are teaching. So if we find, oh, we've got a huge transfer class more than we thought, we can always get somebody else to come and teach more sections of dynamics or thermodynamics. I keep a pretty close eye on uh, wait lists. So if classes all fill up, I'll look and say, oh, okay, we've got 10 students on the wait list for thermodynamics. Like, well, we can handle 10 students in the existing section. We just open up a few more seats in the existing sections. But if there are 30 students, then I will you know, call up my part-time faculty, the lecturers and say, hey, can you come in and teach another section of thermodynamics and we can open it up you know, for you. Yeah, we, uh, every six years we go through an accreditation process. Our accreditation agency is ABETS, Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology. And one of the things that they highlighted in their last review, which was three years ago, was our lecture faculty. And they thought the lecture faculty were really great bringing in the experience. And many of them have been with us many years. In fact, the guy who uh, that you're going to see teaching Engineering 10 and uh, I think ME 20 as well, is Dr. Yosefi, he's been teaching as a lecture faculty for us for 35 years. And he also teaches at Berkeley. I think nice about uh, San Jose State versus a school that's very focused on research is that the faculty who come and teach at San Jose State are there because we want to have interactions with students. So it's usually pretty easy to get into see faculty during uh, office hours. Um, and, and, you know, I often, you know, when we're on campus, I'll see students in all the time uh, meeting with, uh, with faculty. stats on graduates finding jobs. Uh, I think it's about time I need to do another uh, exit survey. So we have, we do exit surveys of our students about, to find out about internships. Um, and the last two exit surveys, an average of 65% uh, of students had done an internship before they graduated. Um, and then for stats on graduates, I don't actually have good stats on that. Um, I think it was something like, uh, something like 60, or so, a similar percentage in our last exit survey had a full-time job lined up by the time we did the exit survey, but the exit survey was done in the end of uh, March, I believe. So it's a little early and a lot of job offers come in like the April, May timeframe as well. So I don't have as good data as I, I really should for that one. You have a question. Uh, if you get placed in a pre-calc class, would you recommend still trying to do a four-year plan? In general, I would say in that case, it's probably better to do a five year, you know, slow it down. And so you can really focus on the, the math and the physics and uh, in those first two years. But it really depends on you. If you want to get out in four years, talk with an advisor about a plan. Uh, basically, if you start in pre-calculus to get done in four years, you need to take Calc 2 the first summer and Physics 3 the second summer. And then you can still get done in four years. So it is possible. It all depends on you know, how fast you want to push it. Uh, question is, how many ME students pass the FE when they graduate? So in case you're wondering what FE stands for, this is a Fundamentals of Engineering exam. So if you want to become licensed as a professional engineer, um, you have to take the FE exam first, which is a nationwide exam. And then after you work under a professional engineer for a few years, you can take the professional engineering exam. It's especially important if you ever want to work in consulting and you need to like stamp drawings. Um, I do not have any stats because um, they don't, the, um, the organization doesn't send us the, the stats about 
uh, students passing the exam. I do recommend that all students take it when they're a senior because this exam is basically, uh, it's based on junior level coursework. Uh, regarding jobs and internships, which ones have a stronger focus on mechanical work and less software? So anything in, well, anything in manufacturing is going to be more, uh, more mechanical focus versus something that's more mechatronics focus where we work on sensors or control systems there's a lot more interaction with software in that case um, you used to say something like automotive would be more mechanical work but this these days with you know so much work with hybrid and electric vehicles there's also a lot of software interaction there um, a lot of options on both sides I had a meeting last, last week with some folks from Lockheed Martin. So Lockheed Martin, big defense space company, they hire a ton of mechanical engineers and a lot of San Jose State grads. And one of the things that they're hoping is they're even thinking with mechanical engineers down the road, they want students, they say students may need to have a background in areas like machine learning and artificial intelligence, even from mechanicals. Uh, we have a we just started our first mechanical engineering machine learning class this past year because uh, everything is getting so much more interdisciplinary these days. So I need to put a couple emails in one more time. Uh, we are basically out of time here, but if you have further questions, feel very free to reach out. I know a few of you, I couldn't answer your questions. So if you email me, we can get back to you. So this one is the BSME advising group. So particularly if you have a question that's advising related, like, hey, what class should I take in the summer? And will this class count for something? That's a great place to go. Um, here is my personal email address. And you can always email me as well. And if if you email me and it's let's say it's a financial aid question, which I don't know, I'll I'll get back to you with the you know what what where, where's the place that you actually should be going, who should you be contacting? And you know, I guess I'll end just with a note. Uh, as I mentioned, I used to teach at Baylor University, great school, good basketball team this year. Um, and I, I liked teaching there and I, I came out to San Jose State, you know, partly because of my, my husband and I enjoy teaching at San Jose State more. Uh, and the, the reason is we have a really diverse student body, which gives it a lot of vitality. Um, one of the reasons our Formula SAE teams are some of the tops in the nation is I think because of that, you get some of the students who are really kind of the egghead types who are really good at design. And we have students who are super creative and super students who can build stuff. And so if you come to San Jose State, and I know many of you have many options, you're looking at a variety of schools, you get to work with students from all kinds of backgrounds. And I really think that is pretty cool. Um, we don't have any majority ethnic group. Um, our largest ethnic group is Asian followed by Hispanics and Caucasians. And so and that, that's pretty neat too, that we get to work with people who look different from you, or maybe you're gonna be working with a veteran or a student who's 50 years old coming back to school. It's pretty neat when you get to work with so many, uh, so many students who uh, from so many different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And with that, uh, Lydia, do you have any last words as well? Not particularly. <laughs> okay. Welcome so again, to me. Yeah, and we hope many of you will, will show up in the fall. And um, and again, you will, as a freshman, you know, hopefully you probably will be able to come back on campus because many of our labs, like in the physics and the intro to engineering and our CAD class are going to be back on campus. And a little is dependent on... Um, on what happens, you know, if there would be a resurgence of COVID, then they might have to shut things down again. But at this point, we're planning, um, planning on being back. 
And I'm going to hit this one last question that just came in, and then call it, uh, and then call it a, an afternoon. The question is: Can we go to San Jose State and trade school or community college at the same time? And the answer is yes. Uh, yeah, you are most welcome. Let's say you're taking some upper division classes at San Jose State, and you want to go pick up your GEs at San Jose City College. Go right ahead. And with that, I'm going to sign off. And again, have a wonderful rest of your afternoon and uh, let us know if you have questions. Bye-bye, everyone. Okay. Thank Bye. you, Dr. Okamoto. Mm -hmm.